Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Pop Recap. I'm Alex. I'm Sean. We're going to be talking about Season 7, Episode 1 of Game of Thrones. So this is very highly anticipated for a lot of people, particularly me, because I'm slightly obsessed, as you know, with dragons and just the series in general. I have to tell you guys something amazing, though. Sean binge-watched the first six seasons in, like, two weeks just for this occasion so that Absolutely. Can for you up. guys, yeah. just for you so I can start talking about it. And I must say, I am so disappointed with myself, the fact that I didn't watch the show when it first came out. Because binging it, this isn't the kind of show you want to binge. This is the kind of show you want to watch an episode, let it soak in, yeah. maybe rewatch it again. And then you can fully grasp it. For me, it was just like episode after episode after episode. Right. And it's like a lot of the seasons are now kind of like, for me, it's pretty much just like one long they all come together. 60 episode season. <laughs> You're but, like drooling. Just like, but I must say, it is one of the best shows um, I've ever watched. Look at this guy. And I'm excited to start talking about season seven. Me too. And I'm so glad that you did this. And you're so right, though, about the emotional journey that the show takes you on. Like, you... You don't know the pain that we know of waiting <laughs> a year, over a year in this case, for this season. There's a lot of speculation. As you know, the show is now ahead of the books. Yes. So there's a lot of speculation in terms of like what's going to happen, who's related to who, like how's, how things are going to go down, who's going to die. And um, you have a whole year in between each season to actually deal with that and like all the, all the fan theories and stuff like that. So I've been watching it since it came out in 2011. So... Uh, welcome to the club, dude. Thank you. It's nice yeah. to be part of the club. So I kind of ignored all that fan thing uh, of once you have I started to, to uh, catch up. So all I really know is what I've seen mm -hmm. and the two trailers that that came out for season seven. So absolutely. that's literally all I have seen. Right. I avoided we, everything else. Absolutely. And we did a few um, re uh, reviews of the first two trailers, and now we have episode one. So I can't be more excited to talk about it. So we're just gonna kind of talk about the different scenes, the different characters, and uh, we have a really interesting perspective as someone who's like just jumped right in mm -hmm. and uh just or someone and someone who's watched it like from season episode right. one yeah so you're fresh now. i'm old and decrepit um <laughs> i'm like an old maester like ready to die just kidding Meist. Meist, Meist. <laughs> okay so we had a really incredible opening scene and as you fans know and you probably do too now that you've watched so many you're like looking forward to that intro sequence with the map and the music and all yes. that stuff and we had a cold open this season uh which was really nice we jumped we didn't we skipped the intro sequence right away and we jumped right into um walder frey walder frey yes which is actually aria and what do you think about that i mean that i mean incredible. she's one of my my t top two favorite characters we'll get totally. to the other one in a minute okay but for me it's just to see her transformation from season one when she got needle to now She's become a sociopath. She loves killing. I said this last season. Yeah. I was like a little she, concerned she, about her. Well, no, but I love that. No, I love great. that. I love that she loves killing and that she's just getting revenge. And for her to to realize that my revenge is on Walter Frey, but I have to then kill all the Freys because it wasn't just him that was part of that that the Red Wedding. Um, it was all the Freys. So mm -hmm. for her to figure out, like I'm going to gather all of them together, have this banquet. And poison all of them yeah. was incredible. I well, loved it. Here's something that I love about the Stark women um, that are still around is they are so smart. Like, that's not a power move. That's not like, you know, she's just like so manipulative and smart and like knows wh where to be and when. And Sansa's the same way. And this opening scene was just incredible. And honestly, I thought they were going to like do a flashback of the Red Wedding when I first saw the cup and I saw Walter Frey. I'm like, please don't bring us through this again. Like, please don't do that. I thought maybe just because it was the opening of season seven and like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody's a fan that they were going to maybe show us something that we didn't see before for the Red Wedding. And then it slowly, you know, you realize. Yeah, and you can like, see them oh, starting right, to like, okay. starting to like. Grow. But I actually knew it was her the whole time because I knew. Just a split second for me that I yeah. was like, oh no, please don't bring me through this again. Like it was like a trauma reaction, like some PTSD or something like that. <laughs> seriously, but yeah, we eventually, like after a few seconds, you realize like, oh my god, it's Arya. She stole his face. Mm -hmm. it's like ah. Uh, so I mean, it was an incredible way to open the season. Yeah, and then if you watch the inside. Um, 
Game of Thrones at the end, mm. they, the producers actually said mm. that wasn't the plan to do a cold open, but right. as they yep. saw how it, um, once they shot how it came out, they're like, we have to do it like, we have to um, edit it like this. Yeah, and that's a really, um, for that actor, I can't remember his name right now, Walter Frey, um, and apparently he did such an amazing job with the subtleties of like... Oh, absolutely, yeah, you can actually see the slow turn. The slow turn, yeah. Which was, which him. was amazing. I mean, my heart was just like, uh, because we've been in that room before in that situation, Mm -hmm. except the tables have turned so drastically, it's not even him. Like, and then Arya's like, what up, bitch? It's like, (laughs) amazing. The North remembers. The The North North remembers. (sighs) Right. So, you know, I was a little concerned about Arya with the sociopath, sociopathy. I don't even know if that's the right word, but her sociopathic tendencies I'm not so worried anymore. We are a little worried about Arya, but we're going to get to that yeah. a little bit. We next saw Bran, which... Uh, well, well, actually, the first thing we saw the, the Night King. Well, sure, yes. We saw the night. We saw this cloud, this ominous yeah. cloud approaching, and of course we know what that is. And we didn't get anything from that scene outside of they're coming, and they have a giant. Giants. There was like... We saw they at have least, a giant. At least three of them. Several giants. Here's the thing. Please don't have Hodor... As long as you don't have Hodor in your army, like just let him die in peace. Ugh, uh, like some of us were like, that. I don't know, they're, they're evil. When he sacrificed himself, that was that was incredible. No, it was beautiful, and that's why I'm like really afraid that because they, they he has to be. I mean, that's gonna come back. It's gonna I, come I, back I, to haunt us. There's no way. I think it's he, gonna hurt my heart. But no, it's I think happen. he's gonna. I think it's, I think it is gonna happen. Hodor is gonna be a white wall. And I think that's good, where I think this season is gonna build to is that. Mm-hmm. scene where, where Bran is pretty much um, yeah. foreshadowing that they are coming sure. and I think the season is building up to that moment okay. where our heroes are on the other side of that yeah. and then the, the the dead army is walking towards them well because in the season past uh, the, I think it was the episode called Hard Home in which there was the woman the wildling woman who had her children and her children were taken and um, <coughs> it, it's, it's very like touching because you see her she doesn't want to fight back because they're her kids you know it's like you don't want to it's a very zombie um trope i think where like the zombies are coming at you and it's your loved one and so you don't want to fight back you don't want to kill them you don't even want to fight for yourself because it's your it's physically your loved one and i'm wondering if that's going to come back to haunt bran and the rest of us because hodor is now one of them so anyway we got a little bit of a hint of that with that cloud of you mm-hmm. know the night king coming toward us and then we saw bran arriving at the wall which yes. we never thought he was gonna make it back there and no. i'm kind of impressed because like how did they even get that fast like hodor saved them maybe two minutes <laughs> you know not gonna question that plot hole nah, just... if, you, if you guys have any ideas as to how that might have happened let us know but anyway <laughs> he foresaw it so i i don't i don't know sure don't know. that's fair Moving um, on. Looking a little cold, um, but they let him in. Yes. Um, so, I mean, he's he's now going to be south of the wall, or at the wall, or south of the wall, and we've been waiting for this big Stark reunion, and it seems like we're getting closer They've been and, teasing closer and, and closer. And, like, as watching the episode, like, is it ever, like, not knowing how the seasons, uh, going through all the seasons, is like, when they just, like, slightly, like, kind of cross paths a little oh, bit. So So many times, you're like, they're right over there, Go, like, just look, look. And it just never happened, and it's just like at least um, when Jon Snow and um, oh, sorry, uh, Sansa Sansa got together. That moment was powerful. Oh, it's and, beautiful. And it's then I'm hoping they that that they have that brand gets to them at some point. Sure, and I'm there's pretty been sure that's a lot of happen, near yeah. misses, but I think it's going to be inevitable that the three of them, the four of them, are yeah. going to somehow come together and join forces. I hope no more Starks are going to die, at least not before they get to see each other again. Well, they killed the use the other useless brother. Oh, poor Tommen. Or not Tommen. Uh, the, uh, see, I, don't, I can't remember his name right now. Because he was the useless one. It was like, when he, I was like, why are you running in a straight line? You're easy to get picked off. I was like, when he died, I was like, good for you. You've seen the memes, I'm sure. It's like, it's <laughs> no, I, 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 I You probably have no time. But anyway. I was just like, if you zig or zag, you would have lived. <laughs> You read it a straight line. <sighs> you well, fool. Natural selection. Exactly. Uh, it was the weak stuff. Not, not all that. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, um, so we also saw Cersei and we saw Jamie. And Cersei now is, is the queen, of course. Yes. And, you know, that was such a great moment last season where you, she's on the throne and the nice push in. It's beautiful. But, of course, 
we see Jamie and they're sort of being pit against each other in this way where Jamie's like sort of has this moral code almost and doesn't like to see like he's the, almost this voice of reason and Cersei's slowly descending into madness. Well, I think she's already there. Like, I well, think I think sure. the only thing that was keeping her sane, I suppose, What's was her, her kids. Children. Yeah, and yep. then now all of them are gone. You know, pretty much she had a hand in all their deaths. Pretty much. Well, sure. And then there's that that's that that scene where she's you know they're painting the the map, of, which I love of, by of the way. Westeros because yeah. she wants to use it strategically to like you know figure out where her enemies are and you know how where they're going to come from and all that stuff. And you know, Jamie confronts her and says, um, you know, we never talked about Tommen. And she's like, doesn't matter. So yeah. It's kind of like, what do you mean doesn't, that's your son. Like, what do you mean it doesn't matter, you know? And so there's this nice like, kind of creepy moment where we see Jamie's humanity and we see Cersei's lack of humanity. And we've been getting that all along, but like it just keeps getting reinforced. <coughs> and tell me what you think of this. Cersei has to die, I think, and it's going to be Jamie who does it. I think she will die. I'm not sure if Jamie. It, de- it depends how 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 far she goes, because I think even in the uh, in season six when she's sitting on that throne and he's looking at her, he knows now that the children were the only thing yeah holding keep her holding her together. And after that walk of shame, and now her kids are gone. I think now there's she she's she can do anything. Well, that's what and I'm he saying. He knows that. And I think she's lost all of her redemptive qualities. And I think oh, Jamie's Jamie's like caught because he loves her but also like slowly sees her like you know leak away like yeah. just like her Cause, humanity cause is even, like even, down the drain even you know? his love for her is not enough to pull her back from where she is now no nothing is and I, I think it's gonna it has to be Jamie that kills her I, I think that's if I really think about it I think that has to be the only way that she dies because it's gonna be um, it's gonna be, he's the king slayer and he's about to be the queen slayer I really I really think so um, anyway, but, I would I wouldn't be surprised, but I think some she has to like either plan to do something or do something. And she's would... on her way to. I mean, you know, when she invited, so we can talk about Euron now. Yeah. So she invited Euron over, um, you know, Euron Greyjoy to talk about potentially having her hand in marriage. Mm-hmm. And Jamie's like, um, I'm sorry, what? You know, like, like really? obviously she's making these choices and these decisions behind her back, um, and without behind his back and without him knowing anything about it and he's kind of like like a little jealous just because he's her lover slash brother whatever yeah um but also because you know he feels like really out of the loop i think in terms yeah, of like her strategy there is no like what's counsel, going on. there's no counsel anymore pretty much she just got rid of oh, everyone no yeah so yeah i think i think he actually does feel a little bit betrayed a little hurt like mm-hmm. you're actually inviting this guy who's not trustworthy into your bed and what about me? Oh my God. And, so, then, and then Euron's there, and he's like, yeah, well, I actually used both of my hands. And we were like, oh, I was like, oh, shit. Like, what? Yeah, and like, here's the nice dig. Break. I was like, mm. Oh, my God. Mm. Yeah, so Euron, clearly a complete dick. Sociopath as well. Um, great match for Cersei. Absolutely. Um, and we didn't think, you know, we were speculating up to this episode, like, when that would happen if we, we were wondering if Euron was going to intercept Danny um, before she got to Dragonstone yeah. um, and that's kind of what it looked like but no Danny got to Dragonstone and Euron met with Cersei however we see Euron saying hey I know you're not convinced I need to bring you a gift yeah we know what that gift's going to be or we know what that gift is trying to be what do you think it is it's got to be Tyrion's head oh I, I I totally agree yeah it has to be that yeah because that's, so, that's literally the only... Or, she's so um, fixated on it. Like, you know... Um, and he, the he, ladies he from Dawn, I think. Maybe uh, from Dorne, two, yeah. The Dorne, yeah. Uh, it's got to be Tyrion because they hit that the home. The, she keeps... Oh, she's so fixated on Tyrion. And we, she, she was talking about it just prior to announcing, like, oh, yes, yeah. Euron's coming for my hand. Um, I, I think it has to be Tyrion. I think that's what Euron... I think he knows that somehow. And I think that's what he's going to go get. And let's hope that that doesn't happen because we all love Tyrion, of course. So the dragons um, will say will protect him. Oh my god! Don't even talk to me about dragons. I love dragons. <laughs> yeah, so before he watched the seasons, he's you know I'm talking about these dragons and how amazing the dragons are. What do you think about the dragons? They're amazing, right? Yeah, I'm I'm Sexy. curious to see how much more they are used. How many more dragons? Well, because I don't think it's going to be as straightforward. It's not going to be like okay, dragons go kill because they have a mind of their own. 
Yeah, they just do and, whatever they you want. You know, I think we forget that, and this is maybe as a conversation for the end of what we're doing here. But you know, the the other two, like you know, Drogon's loyal. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's been free, but um, I, I can't remember the other two's name, Viserion and. Or is that a bro's name? Anyway, there's two other dragons. The, the, the two and smaller they've ones. the smaller ones, and they've been in captivity basically for their whole lives. Yeah. Anyway, that's a conversation for another time because we didn't really touch on dragons in this episode. But I would like to talk now a little bit about Winterfell. Yes. So we left last season with Sansa and John finally meeting up again. Sansa's been through so much and Yes. Um, has this alliance with Peter. And this is a really, really interesting dynamic because I was convinced that Peter already had his claws in her and was manipulating her and like trying to pit her against John. And that's what we got from last season and that's where we ended last season and that's what we got also from the trailers leading up to season seven. And this episode surprised me because I thought it was going to be really obvious that Peter has his claws in her. But she's like go away, Peter. Like, what do you need? You know? And so that surprised me. What do you think about that? I mean, I think Littlefinger is one of the biggest mistakes he did was tell Sansa that pretty much anything that he does, he has a vision of himself on the throne. Mm -hmm. And if he's going to, whatever he decides to do, is that going to help me get there? Then I'll do it. If it's not going to help me, I'm not going to do it. So I think he shouldn't have told her that because now she knows Mm -hmm. that anything, and he, he also knows that he wants her. So now she's just using that to get whatever she wants now. So he actually succeeded a little bit of power by telling her that to her. Because now she knows, well, I know what motivates you. And I know that you want me. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. Because if it wasn't for that, um, Johnson would be dead. That's true. However, I think Sansa's only weakness is that there is still that part of Peter whispering in her ear yes, that she little. doesn't she thinks she's all she's like i get you peter i understand you i'm not going to be tricked by you i still think that there's that little part of her that is still able to be manipulated by him because he's so good at that and we saw that we saw this happen um in the scene where john and Sansa are fighting about yeah. like should we let these people who betrayed us should we save their their castles their families yeah. and john's like well yeah of course and Sansa's like no they betrayed us and I think it's really interesting because we kept seeing shots of Peter and Sansa being disappointed and mad. And I still think that's in play. I, we're, I don't think we're going to get it yet. But I think Peter has more of uh, Sansa's attention and than we think she does, than we think, she, than we think he does. Um, I, 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 and it's, sub, it's subtle. Yeah, it's I think subconscious. It's sub, I, I think it's subtle. But, but I, I think, think it's going to be very, very important. But I know? think she's, she, she's playing him... Just as much she, as he's trying to play her. She thinks that he's... She think, I feel like she thinks that he hasn't figured out, and she doesn't. I feel like there's stuff. There's something we're not getting as an as audience. Maybe. He has a plan. Otherwise, they wouldn't be keeping him around like this. You no, know? I know. I have something, something is going to happen with him. Absolutely. And I was I was really interested because I we've seen Sansa and John sort of go at it in this way. And it seems like they've come to some sort of understanding or agreement that Sansa is the brains... And John, you know, maybe is more of the brawn uh, yeah. in, in a way. Um, what was really interesting is the scene ended with Sansa talking about Cersei. And John says, it almost seems like you admire her. And Sansa, like, sort of wistfully looks off and is like, I learned a lot from her. Well, yeah, because like she said, everyone who's crossed her has died. And I yeah. think Sansa's kind of like at, when she killed um, um, her husband. Ramsay. Ramsay. Yeah. Um, that was the beginning of her like learning from Cersei like people who crossed you 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 get that yeah so I don't think that Sansa's out of the water in terms of ending up A. alive and B. a good person like I'm I feel like she's been through so much that she still is prone to manipulation in a way that we haven't quite seen yet so that's going to be a really interesting thing to watch going forward but um, I, I must say, I, lo- I love Jon Snow. He's my he's my favorite character. You all love Jon Snow. Too. Yeah, and I and I think this the show is its strongest when he's in it. He's the he's the moral compass. Of the you know show. what's funny is he's almost the glue because yes. because we started off with the Stark family, and 
ironically, he was the outcast of the Stark family, and now he's almost the one thing that's going to bring them yeah, all He's back almost together. like this, the light that yeah. they're all trying to get to. Yeah. And Sansa's gotten mm-hmm. there, but the other two have not. Yeah. So that's going to be really, that dynamic is going to be really interesting, and I don't think it's going to end. I think that we're going to have to see some shit go down before we get our happy ending with the Stark family. So. If, if if we get one. <laughs> well, we're not going to go there. It's one. only episode one. Of we already, the they, they lost second two brothers, season. you know, so. No, it's true. I mean, hey, anything could happen. But yeah. let's talk a little bit about Sam um, at the library. <laughs> <laughs> at Old Town. I mean, I, I I didn't watch the credits close enough, and I don't know who the editor is, but whoever the editor is did a fantastic job with editing that scene and the sound designer as well. Um, with just it was almost mm-hmm. like the sing song, like, and we we got the sense of how long he was there, mm-hmm. like he's been there a while, and he's just like cleaning up poop. It's like bang, 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 poor gag. You, you, <laughs> you know, know, you know what it reminds me of, and uh, guys, comment below if you agree. This is the scene in Breaking Bad. Where they're just making the the math, the, the math over yeah. and over and over again. It's the same old thing. And mm-hmm. the, the, it was funny when Sam in season six was like, oh, I'm going to go to Old Town. I'm going to become a mess. We were it's, all envisioned like, oh, he's just going to go there. He's going to be reading these it's books. It's not quite and, what it's and do, and then, but Now he's just like feeding them, picking up their poop, feeding them, picking yeah. up their poop, yeah. putting, putting books away, feeding them, picking up poop, and over and over and over and over and over again. Right. And But we got two very but important... But it never broke him. No, of course not. You know, but, I mean, I, I was almost gagging. I was like trying to drink my wine, my Game of Thrones wine from my goblet, which I always have. <laughs> I was like trying to drink my wine. I'm like, oh, no, can't do it. <laughs> but we got two very important pieces of information from the scenes of Sam uh, just in the library. Number one, we saw that he was looking through this book. He finally got access or whatever it was. He's looking through this book. There's a horde of dragon glass at Dragonstone. So he's writing the letter to John. He has to let John know about that yeah. because that's what they're looking for in order to that's what we need. That and Valerian steel, which we yeah. haven't touched on, but the dragon glass is very important. There's a whole mountain of it, a horde of it at Dragonstone. So that's going to be very important. Thing number 2, we saw Jora. Yes. Yep. So Jora hasn't gone completely mad yet. No. But it uh, seems like he's close. Yeah, and that was really great because we love Jorah and we obviously want him to do great. Um, as long as we're talking about Jorah, um, there's hope for him, I think, because we have not seen Melisandre in this episode. And we know that Melisandre, we know that um, a, a red priestess or a red priest was the one who cured Shireen, Princess Shireen, of her uh, grayscale. Yeah. So, you know, Stannis told us that several seasons ago. And so I am thinking that Melisandre and Jorah are somehow going to cross paths. She's going to cure him, and then he's going to come uh, be a warrior for Daenerys or in some other way. I think mm. they kind of set that up, you know, because they set up the whole dragon scale. Uh, what am I trying to say? Not dragon scale. Uh, grayscale. grayscale, yeah. They set up the whole grayscale thing, how it's related to the Lord of Light. And I think. There's going to be some sort of parallel there between Melisandre, who's sort of on the run, and Jorah, who's also sort of on the run. Both banished. Both banished. I think they're going to come together, and I think Jorah's going to get sort of the second chance in some way. He might never be the same, but I think that's sort of what they're leading towards. You know, I, actually, I actually want to see him go go into madness and then have to kind of put him down like an old like old Look, yeller. Why? No, You're a sociopath, too. <laughs> no, I mean, but I just think... Um, I'm he just... has. Here's the thing. He has a ser- He has a purpose to serve that he has not fulfilled, and I think that he had. Otherwise, they like. What's the point of even having? Like, he should have been just banished and out of the show forever. There's a reason they're keeping him around. He has one last thing to do, and we don't know what that is. You know, and that's how I felt about Jon Snow. But when he died, it was sort of like they have to bring him back because he hasn't really done anything in any meaningful way. And the show has incredible writers, and I know that they wouldn't let any character go, un, you know, fulfilled in in one one thing, even if it's a seemingly small thing, you know, it's they're gonna tie it all together. Well, I mean, he saved way. Danny last season. He saved her. I mean, but uh, I, that's, I, that's true. But I think I think there's gonna be something bigger. Or he could pass the grayscale on to someone else, like one of her well, enemies. We don't we don't know if he touched Sam. I mean, if I watched it again, you can probably tell. No, I don't. No, I don't he hit so. the he hit the the bowl out of his hand. But what if he what if he did? No, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think he does. 
just like spread the whole new virus just spreading grayscale all over the place and yeah, then the but, white white then we have all mm-hmm. this this whole new thing to worry about so anyway so we so that's an amazing uh scene that we saw in jorah and we know that he's still out there slightly alive uh kind of gross that arm i mean he needs like some moisturizer or something i know he's like down to the bone it looks like he's starving himself (sighs) nasty maybe he's trying to kill himself before he like completely goes into madness maybe well so we'll see i mean there's still a lot of uh there's many episodes left so let's talk about aria i was a little worried i don't know if you felt this way as a woman uh as she's approaching this horde of dudes and we've seen what dudes can do in game of thrones yes and i felt really uncomfortable with her sitting down with them and they're giving her wine and they seem really nice you're like oh i have a wife and you know Mm -hmm. they're setting it up so that it's like really normal and and amazing but then they're like oh you're old enough to drink and she's like chugging it and i'm like really nervous that she's going to get a little too drunk and they're absolutely going to take advantage of her in some way and she's not going to be able to fight herself to sorry to defend herself well i think i was something's gonna happen where one of them figures out who she is or something's gonna happen where she's gonna have to fight them off at some point or one of them is gonna get too drunk and try to try to uh attack her or something of that nature that that little group that she's with it's not gonna end well for them She's well, going to be fine, but it's not going to well But, you know, I mean, here's the thing. is like we know that a lot of characters come out fine in terms of being alive. But what if, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a little nervous. Like, the show doesn't take these things uh, lightly. And I'm, no. I'm not I'm not sure they're not going to violate her in some way. Anyway, that said, we saw in the post credits the next time on Game of Thrones or whatever, we saw Nymeria. I'm pretty sure we saw Nymeria. That's her wolf. Yeah. That's her dire wolf that escaped into the woods in like season one. And so I'm thinking that she's going to get into trouble and Nymeria is going to come and save her. So that is something... That would make sense. That would be incredible. You know? Because there's Um, there's too many of them for... They're all soldiers. I mean, if they were just like common folk, I think she could take them. She's she's getting... I mean, the way they were setting it up, the way they were shooting it, they're getting her drunk. You know, I mean, maybe not even on purpose, but that's yeah. totally just the way it's going to go. And, and it was also funny, like, at the end of that scene where where they're like, well, why, why are you going to King's Landing? Oh, I'm going to go kill the queen. And they're and like, they're all, ah, yeah. yeah, whatever. Well, of course not. And then she's like, sense. yeah, that sounds ridiculous, but that's actually what I'm going to plan to do. I have a, I have a question, though. Is that actually what she's doing, or is she lying to them? Is she trying no, to I make think, it to Winterfell? Well, mm, well, I th- I'm not sure if she's trying to make she, it to Winterfell she or if she's said, trying to make it back south. She said in season six, that's so where she was going, but I believe her now in, in the fact that because she's queen now, I think that's what she's going to do. Does she know that, though? I think she does. Because John just got the, the, the raven yeah. in the same episode. I'm not sure Arya has the same... Although maybe, because she was pretending to be Walder Frey for... Yeah. I don't know how So I, I think that's what she's going to do. And the, and the funny thing is if I, you... I really want her to go to Winterfell. I think she's eventually going to get there, but I w- I'm curious to see if she does go to King's Landing, oh. what approach she's going to to try to... I don't think she's going to kill her. I mean, well, she might, but I'm just curious to see... It's funny for me, but well, before I get to that, it's funny how, like, when she said that they all laughed, and she kind of giggled, too, because if from season one to now, if she said at the beginning, there's like, come on, this little girl, there's no way she could do that. But then to see her evolve into the sociopath... Which I enjoy. No, I I, I love her. Yeah. That's why when she tried to um to try to ditch all that, I like I, I never bought it. I was like, when she put Neil in that rock, I'm like, she's coming back for it. She just can't give up. I think she that knew. Identity. I think she knew what she was doing. She just had to do. I don't think she ever had the intention of abandoning her revenge story. I think she just had to do what she had to do to continue on her journey. Yeah, you know? it's almost like she's like, well, I'm going to use what I've learned to now help me get who I need to get. Okay, great. Well, anyway, so hopefully that'll turn out in her favor. She'll we'll see be Namaria fine. again. She's going to be fine. I mean, she can take care of herself. Let's talk about the Hound. So this is really interesting. So the Hound ended up with the Brother Without Banners, Brothers Without Banners, and ends up back at the same house where yes. he robbed them and punched the guy out and just took sort of left them. Yeah, took his silver. They gave him rabbit stew. Which sounded yeah. delicious. Gave him a place to stay for the night. It was going to offer him some work for honest pay. And he shows back up there and they've died because, in theory, he took all their money. 
and yeah, left and, them to die. But, but or it's just like exactly what he said: when winter comes, they're gonna be dead anyway. So what's the point of him having the silver it could when be. he's gonna die? That's true. Although he looks a little guilty almost Absolutely. when this happens, and um, they're sort of setting this up. Like, I love his arc. I love it so much because he's just this bitter guy who, you know, he th- he thinks the world's against him. He's like, there is no God. There's no mm-hmm. nothing. Like it's just us and our fucking asshole tendencies or whatever. And what was really nice is when he comes back to this place with the Brothers Without Banners, um, there's the fire scene, which we'll talk about in a second. But, you know, he wants to bury these these people. Absolutely. He, the, the old hound would never do that. The old hound would spit on them and kick them and be like, God, Britain's... Went, you know, went through is. their pockets first, too. Yeah, go through the, yeah, steal their Rolexes and shit like that. So. <laughs> but I think that's the Ari effect on him. Like, even though, like, they... He, like, tried to dismiss her, but she did have an effect I on him. I think that's absolutely true. And let's talk... This is a really amazing scene. Let's talk about when he's looking into the fire. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, the irony there, right? Because it, he's afraid of fire. It was the fire that, you know, his brother, you know, shoved him into the fire mm-hmm. and scarred his face. And he's afraid of fire. And not only is he afraid of fire, but he doesn't believe in religion. He's like, this is all bullshit. He doesn't believe like, in anything. You know? He doesn't believe in anything. Yeah, except himself. And... He decide he's like ret- reticent to do it, but then he decides to look into the fire, and this is an incredible scene because he sees something, like the the Lord of Light is actually working through the Hound as well. Who would have thought? It's incredible. It was an incredible scene, and he, he what he says is that he sees. I think he said that he sees Dragonstone. Um, he sees the the White Walkers coming. Yeah, and this wall of ice, right? Which is the wall. Um, and so, like, you know, he's, I think he's just as surprised as anybody and still won't really admit that, you know, outwardly that, that he's, you know, changed and that he see these, sees these things. But it's really interesting that the Lord of Light has also chosen him to um, give these visions in the fire, mm-hmm. you know, and he knows how to look for them, you know, maybe because of the way he got scarred or yeah. because of... I don't know. It's just so great. And then it's funny, like, his character is almost wondering, and I think... The way they did it was like, well, why would did the hound survive? Because when Arya left him, we pretty much were like, well, he's yeah. done. He's dead. Yeah, but yeah, obviously, yeah. like, the Lord of Light had a reason for saving him. And I think him seeing these visions are going to have some kind of effect of, of maybe bringing the a band of light to the wall and them helping out or something of that nature. Totally. The, the Lord of Light's not done with him. And that's why he didn't die then when yeah. he pretty much should have died. Yeah, he himself was just like, well, yeah, he pretty much gave up. He's like, I'm yeah, done. Yeah, he keeps saying to to Beric Dondarrion, he's like, why did the Lord of Light bring you back so many times? And he's like, I don't know. But yeah. guess what? The Lord of Light probably Bro- brought, brought the Hound, the hound back. back too. He just doesn't yeah. know it, you know, because he really was left to die. And like, there's no way, there's no way he should have survived that. Would have survived. Absolutely. That, you know, so oh, that's that's such a fascinating character to follow, and I can't wait to see what we have in store for the Hound, um, because I love these kind of like. He sort of started out as a villain, and then we kind of grew to like him and, and hate him at the same time. Yeah. And now he's like, might be a hero in some way. In some small way, he's going to make some difference. I think he is. Yeah. Um, so, th- But that's Arya having that effect. It's funny how they, they kind of like traded places a little bit. He was just like, um, just whatever. He was pretty much calling it like it is. Like with that with the father Absolutely. and the little daughter, he was right. Like come winter, they're going to be dead. I mean, obviously, it didn't happen the way he thought it would. He might have had an effect on that. Um, in a way, but he was right, and he just calls it like it is, and then now he's trying to kind of, he's doing a 180 in terms of, I think he is going to do something um, that he's going to be the hero, and I think Arya depending upon how you want to look at it, is turning more into a sociopath, kind of like he was, just like a, a kill for whatever reason just to get what I want, or for money, or for whatever it is. Yeah. I'm interested to see that, but on Ari, on the topic of Arya, maybe it's not going to be Nymeria that comes to her in the woods. Maybe it's going to be the Hound and the brothers without banners that are going to come to her, you know. And that's how that's they're going to. Be, I would love to reuniting. see them cross paths again. I, yeah, I think they will. I think they have to. You know, I think it's, and I wonder what that's going to be because, you know, I think maybe she's going to start being the one who like doesn't care about anybody and wants everybody dead, and he's going to be the one who actually has the heart. Yeah, because they're completely you know? in different places now. Yeah. Than the last time when she left him, so yeah, I would love for them to cross paths again. I hope it does happen. Great. Um, one last thing. Uh, the final thing that we saw is Daenerys coming home to Dragonstone, and 
you know, for someone like not to, you know, invalidate your viewing experience, <laughs> but for someone like me and a lot of other viewers and readers, for example, who have been reading the books, I, I'm not a reader. I just watched the show since 2011. Someone who's been on this journey for, you know, years now, like, you know, like I've been waiting to see what happens for like six or seven years, whatever it has been. It's it was just such a moment that Daenerys finally comes home because that has been something that they've set up and that she's wanted and that she's mm-hmm. been fighting for 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 years like actual yeah. human years you know because like, we've had to wait for it <clears throat> and uh, it was just a really really nice moment when she arrives and it was a very silent scene and that's what made it a great scene absolutely is that if if you're trying to be a filmmaker or a screenwriter certain moments like this. Less dialogue is better mm-hmm. because you get to soak it in just like the characters are soaking it in. Mm-hmm. And there's points where like Grey Worm was like looks like he was gonna sit and like, yeah. like mm-hmm. just like the us the Masandra's audience we like, just wanna like we wanna soak it in. Cause like yeah. you said, she hasn't been back there since season one. Yeah. And she, this long journey with the Diraki and everything that she's been through, now to finally get back home. And then I love the part that she saw the throne. And that's kind of symbolic. Like that's not where I want to sit. Yeah. I want to go to the th- to the uh, to the table. She's like, I still have work to do. Yeah, we have work yeah. to do. Yeah. Like that's not the where I want to sit. And I love that. I I, I love like. It's th- so subtle. And one of the good things about this show amazing. is that it knows the moment to be yeah. quiet mm-hmm. and let us sink it in and mm-hmm. enjoy it. Yeah. And that was one of the scenes where I'm just glad there was no dialogue until the. The very, very, end. very, very end. Shall we begin? Shall we begin? Yeah. Because as the like, season right, begins, <laughs> we know we're in for a great ride to see mm-hmm. exactly where all these characters are gonna are gonna go. So I, I love the way they ended this this episode. It was great. Yeah, I mean, so excited. And honestly, I was like reticent to even start the episode because I'm like, I don't want it to end. But I'm so glad that you're caught up and yes. that you're a fan now because I'm you, you can totally more. see where the fandom comes from for me. Um, and some of the other people who have been on the channel before, like Orchid and such. Um, it's just such a great show, and we're looking forward to doing more um, pop recaps for the show in the future. So thank you so much for watching. Um, let us know what your thoughts are, because Absolutely. I'm sure we must have missed a few things. Um, and in terms of like what we're going to see next time, I'd love to talk about it, because clearly I'm a fan, and he's now a fan too. I'm, so. a, I'm completely on fan now. Great. And then also, like, if... if Again, like Alex said, if there's something that we missed or some Easter eggs that you guys saw that we didn't talk about, please point them out. Or what are your theories going forward about all of the characters? Where do you think the show is going to go? Are you kind of sad that this is only going to be eight episodes this season versus the traditional ten? Um, let us know about all those things. And like Alex said, we're going to be trying to recap every episode um, after we've watched it. And then we'll do a season recap after the season has ended. And then also just let us know what other if you like this recap, what other shows would you like us to recap going into the summer and into the fall. So I'm I'm really excited a lot of good stuff to continue away. watching this game of thumbs. So now yeah. we actually get some I get some air in between them now versus like watching them back to back to back to back to back. So um get to soak it in a little bit, which is nice. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to all you fans out there and even people who aren't, um, thanks for watching our Absolutely. first pop recap. I'm Alex. I'm Sean. We'll see you next time on Pop Culture Universe. Bye. Bye.